Here at Sebring 2016, one of the subjects that has come up over and over, it did in our llama dinner opening night when we had our engine debates, is fuel in airplanes. You got to have an airplane, you got to have an engine on the front of the airplane, and you got to have fuel that goes in that engine that works for you in the long run. I'm Dan Johnson, and I'm talking to Chris Diacosta. Did I say that right? Diacosta. Diacosta, okay. And Chris is the guy behind Swift Fuels. At been getting a good bit of good PR in aviation, and we want to kind of dive into this a little bit without going too deeply into the technical aspects. We'll tell you how you can do more of that later, but to get the overview of why we should pay attention to what Swift Fuels is doing. Now, one thing I know is that government, our government in the United States and governments all over the world seem to be determined to get rid of lead in fuels. And that happened in the automobile fuel in the industry a number of years ago. But 100 low lead is still lead. Swift doesn't have any lead in it. Is that That's correct, Chris? Absolutely correct. Give me the details about that. Okay, so lead is a neurotoxin. The medical community, which is why the EPA and others want the lead gone, it doesn't metabolize in the body. That's why they want the lead gone. So we, our company is all about unleaded aviation gasoline. We're in a program and evaluation led by the FAA in the United States for high-octane unleaded alternatives, which are meant for the high-octane, the high-performance aircraft. But of course, at SWIFT, we've discovered that uh, there's a large number of lower octane requiring engines that are just very happy with the lower octane alternatives. So we've introduced a fuel, it was actually introduced at Oshkosh this past year on a nationwide basis, but we've been selling it since that time, a 94 motor octane Avgas. So typically engines require motor octane ratings, but not all engines, and we'll talk a little bit about that. M-O-N-R-O-N-A-K-I. Right. It has something to do with octane. It has something to do with anti-knock, and I just told you everything I know. So educate <laughs> me a little bit further. Okay. What I'll do is I'll use the Rotax uh, fuel standards as, a, as an indication of this. So Rotax has five models of aircraft engines. I've got charts of this to show it. But their, their basic engines require a minimum 85 motor octane number, which is equivalent to a 95 research octane number, which is equivalent to a 91 anti-knock index, or AKI. So 85, 95, 91. Now what is it we the, see at the pump? What's yeah, so the, what, what what's you the see, value we what, see at the pump? What you see at a gasoline station when you pull in is the AKI. It's the middle number. And if you look closely at those little yellow stickers that have those, whether it says 87, 89, 91, 93, it, it also has the formula. It says R plus M divided by 2. That's the research number, the high one, plus the motor octane, which is the low one. Okay. The added together divided by 2 is the average, which is the AKI, the anti knock index. When you buy auto gas, that's what you're buying. The, the low number, the motor octane number, is the number that's traditionally used for airplane avgas, for piston engine avgas. So if you buy, let's just say, 91 at the pump, 91 AKI, that's probably an 86 motor, and we're selling a 94 motor octane fuel, eight motor octane points higher than autogas. That translates into a higher safety margin for anti-detonation purposes. Now, low anti detonation is the same thing as anti-knock? Anti-knock, that's okay, correct. Okay, those that's are the same Same thing, terms. that's right. We're trying to prevent a knock-related event in the engine, which can ultimately destroy an engine if it... You know, if it's a big knock and it happens too often. So a that's higher a, number is better. A higher number is but better. But I presume a higher number is harder to reach in some way or Absol costs more or something. It's substantially harder to reach the higher you go. So uh, a 100 motor octane fuel like 100 low lead is a very high octane rating, but it's actually way higher, in fact, than what a lot of airplanes in the fleet need. It's just it's been the fuel of choice for, what, 50, 60, 70 years. So what we've done is basically introduced a 94-octane fuel, which happens to meet the needs of, by our calculation, 55% of the U.S. fleet can fly the 94-motor-octane fuel just fine. It's a function of what their engine requirements are. It's only the high-performance, the higher compression engine-type aircraft that require the minimum 100-motor-octane fuel. Okay, so... So those guys that are out there in their GA airplanes flying Cirruses and Bonanzas and the, the high-performance airplanes of right. the fleet, so to say. Now, they need a pretty high grade of fuel because they those still are need, higher compression engines. They still need 100 low lead. They still need 100 low lead today. Yes, yes. Just for their benefit, are you planning to approach that market? Well, absolutely. That's why we're in the PAFI program with the FAA. So we, there's been a program announced for the last year and a half to, to evaluate 
the alternative fuels for the high octane fuel. And, and we hope that our fuel, we have two fuels in that program. There's, there were 17 fuels submitted in 2014. Of those 17, the FAA picked four, and SWIFT has two of those four. And we're in that program till the end of 2018 until they finalize their decisions on which fuels they want to choose. But in the meantime, though, there's still 55% of the fleet that's thirsty for this fuel. And so we believe that by introducing a commercially viable, cost competitive, high, it's a premium quality fuel that 80 octane aircraft can use, light sports can use, auto gas STC aircraft can use, and now 91 avgas requiring aircraft can use as a function of the SI, SAIB that's just been issued, HQ 1605. That is a, all of those are reasons why 55% of the fleet can, are capable of flying our fuel. So if you have a higher grade fuel, an engine that doesn't require that fuel can still use it. That's right. You just can't go the other way. It starts from what's, what the minimum requirement for your aircraft is. If you meet the minimum or above, you can fly the fuel. Okay. So the 80s, the 80, you know, 63, 71, 73, 80, 91 AKI, 91 MON, all of those fuel, all those engine requirements can be met by our fuel, which is a 94 motor octane, and anything up. You're aiming your product today at the kind of market that we see here at Sebring, which is light sport, the Rotax, the Continentals, the Jabiru's, and the other engines that we saw on our right. stand up there the other night. They're all able to use the Swift fuels today. Absolutely, yes. And you've got a little better price point on it, too. You're selling fuel here, as you mentioned in your talk. Well, it depends on what the individual retailer wants to sell it for. That's not right. your dictate. That's an FBO decision. You wholesale it to them, and then right. they make that decision. Right. But what they're selling it for here is one example, and we'll come back to that in just a second, is three ninety-five a gallon, which in the world of Avgas is a pretty good number. That's correct. So today you had an announcement. Uh, here we are, the last day of Sebring 2016, and you had something you're pretty proud of. Tell us what that is. Yeah, so the Sebring Airport has been traditionally selling autogas on site. They've had a 1,000-gallon autogas tank, and uh, they agreed today to take the autogas out of that tank and instead replace it with our Swift 94 unleaded avgas. So after today, that tank will only have Swift, you know, 94 motor octane avgas. We're super proud of that. We thank the airport, the airport board, the uh, Volo Aviation, uh, the FBO here, as well as World Fuel, who helped bring the fuel truck. And there's been a lot of others, yourself included, but uh, Phil Lockwood, the Hanson brothers, and a bunch of others that are here at the air show have all voiced their 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 support for the fact that this unleaded aviation fuel is really a, a something that's desperately needed. So we've gotten rid of the sort of off off-grade auto gas, whatever that is, and we put into a high premium product, which meets a whole bunch of ASTM standards for avgas and auto gas that I explained in my, in my talk. So it's really a better fuel anyway than the auto products are. Maybe they're fine for autos, but this is airplanes, yeah. and they're not getting the same quality fuel. I guarantee you the quality fuel they're getting in those kind of auto gas tanks that you're talking about is far inferior to what we're offering. We're offering a very high motor octane, which provides the anti-detonation. It's a very low vapor pressure, which prevents vapor lock year-round, which is not true of autogas. No gum-forming compounds like we're found in autogas. Ours is without that. And it's commercially insured for aviation, which is a huge deal. And no ethanol either. And no ethanol, ethanol-free completely. No lead, no ethanol. Good I've talked that. to a lot of airports and uh, EAA chapters and whatnot around the country. I was with some folks in Ray, Michigan, uh, two weeks ago, and, I, and two guys spoke up in the discussion and said they'd both spent $40,000 each fixing their aircraft wow. as a result of uh, carburetor and fuel system problems caused by ethanol. Goodness gracious. So it's a, a, it seems to be a prevalent issue around the country, and by having an ethanol-free fuel, it's, we believe it's going to save people a lot of money. Give me the overview about how you're getting it out there in the field for people to use. Right, so it's available for nationwide distribution right now. We're working with relationships with all the top five uh, aviation fuel distributors, Fuel, World Fuel, Eastern Epic, and Philip 66. We're free and open to talk to them about distributing if, it, if that helps your airports. We've worked with some independent distributors and in some of the more remote air strips or airfields uh, that don't have existing relationships. But, but bottom line, we'll work hard to make sure that the fuel gets to where it needs to go. We've got targeted Cali the, the West Coast, basically California being a major uh, 
focus area, Florida, the southeast coast, uh, the northeast region, New York area, Philadelphia and so forth, the Midwest, and ultimately Canada. Uh, there's some people that have already called us in relation to that opportunity there. So we're working in all these areas. And as a small company trying to increase our reach, we also have relationships with several of the major oil companies who've offered to help. And we're working with those people now to, as, we grow the, to, as we grow the market and reach certain levels or tranches of volume, we can move into the major oil companies helping do the same thing with meeting our spec. So we control the spec. So my team, uh, Brian Sturm, Thomas Albizat, John Zukowski, all three are pilots. They're here today at Sebring. They, they just poked their head in the door just now. They've been emptying that fuel tank of autogas and putting our avgas into it. Uh, so we have a, and there's more of our team, but those, are, those three here are pilots. So they bring a lot of uh, pilot savvy to our, to our thoughts here. Great stuff. A lot of good information. Uh, we're in danger of giving people sensory overload here with too much information. So let's give them an opportunity to go explore more for those that say, fine, I've already heard enough. I just got to figure out how to get the stuff so they can contact you for that. But others that say, well, I have a specific detailed question. Where can we send them on the web? We'll put it up on the screen. Just give us your web address. I'll give you several points to think about. So you can come to www.swiftfuels.com. Uh, that's our main website. You can call us 765-237-3195. Uh, we also have relationships. Bert Rattan's flying our fuel on his uh, floater. Uh, Rick Volker is an acrobatic pilot out of Niagara Falls, New York. He's been flying our fuel for more than a year now. Uh, Chris Rounds down in Tallahoma, Florida. Now the fuel's in Sebring. We have a lot of, I guess, plant, planted folks that have got experience with our fuel. The Able Flight program has been using it on Rotax engines for the last two, and a, two years at Purdue. So there's a lot of Purdue knowledge about the fuel and, 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 as well as our own knowledge. So there's a lot of places that we can point you to. We've got Rotax reports and other things that can help people digest this fuel and understand it from a technical standpoint to get comfortable. We're very confident the fuel will be received well by everybody. All the comments are excellent. We're, we're very, oh, another one is Griffith Maryville, which has the GNN, the, the rebuilders of piston engines, GNN aircraft, and they have our fuel, and they're the experts of rebuilding engines, and they love our fuel. Excellent stuff. Well, a lot of good information there, swiftfuels.com to get more information directly from Chris and his team. Uh, we'll try and keep up with that on my website as well, and you can find all kinds of information about affordable aircraft of all sorts on bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for joining, Tris, Chris DeAcosta. That's me. <laughs> I'll get that eventually. Thanks for joining Chris and I here at Sebring 2016.